Hey everybody, today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics, 6th edition, by N. Gregory Menkew, and today we're going to be doing chapter 2, problem number 5. So this problem just asks us to classify different statements as pertaining to either microeconomics or macroeconomics. So it's worth reviewing just quickly what the distinction between those two subfields of economics is. And in general, you can think about microeconomics as things having to do with individual markets, whereas macroeconomics, you can think of as being sort of the more big picture version of economics, where rather than thinking about individual markets, we're thinking about aggregate production in the economy and things like that, that we don't necessarily care so much what specifically is being produced. We care in total how much stuff is being produced and how much is being consumed. So we can take a look at what we have going on here. The first situation says, a family's decision about how much income to save. Now this is actually an interesting one to start with because it's not immediately obvious which one this is going to be. Because we can think in a microeconomic context that this is at the level of the individual household that we're going to see we face a trade-off between essentially consuming today or saving and consuming tomorrow and we have a decision model for that that depends on interest rates and preferences and a whole bunch of different stuff. But we're not looking at a particular product. We're not saying, oh, it's an individual's decision about whether or not to buy a car. But nonetheless, this seems to relate back to an individual or a household level decision rather than asking, for example, what determines in aggregate how much the population is saving. So I would still argue that this is on more of a microeconomic level than a macroeconomic level. Part B of the question asks us to classify the effect of government regulations on auto emissions as either pertaining to microeconomics or macroeconomics. Now in this particular case, we're talking about government regulation of a particular industry, of a particular market. We're not talking about, for example, income tax rates in general and their effect on the aggregate economy. We're talking specifically about auto emissions, which ties back to the market for cars. For this reason, this scenario is going to be one that pertains to microeconomics more so than macroeconomics. Part C of the question asks us to classify whether the impact of higher national saving on economic growth pertains more to microeconomics or macroeconomics. So we notice two things here. We say higher national saving. So we're not told, you know, this isn't about individual household decision making that we're concerned at the level of all of the households in the economy together. And we're also concerned at the level of not a particular market. We're not talking about the market for mutual funds specifically or anything like that, or what happens to the stock price of Apple. We're talking about not only all the households lumped together, but all the savings lumped together, and how that affects the behavior of the aggregate economy, that we're talking about economic growth at a very high level, so this scenario would pertain more to macroeconomics than to microeconomics. Part D of the question asks us to classify a firm's decision about how many workers to hire as either pertaining to microeconomics or macroeconomics. Again, the best way to think about this is we don't know what type of workers they're trying to hire, but what we would be trying to do in this case if we were trying to understand how the firm makes this decision is we would be looking at the level of the individual firm rather than the more aggregate level of all the firms in the economy together. That we're not asking what happens to aggregate unemployment, we're asking at a much smaller level, how is that one firm making a decision? So I would classify this as more pertaining to microeconomics than to macroeconomics. The last part of the question asks us to classify the relationship between the inflation rate and changes in the quantity of money as pertaining either to microeconomics or to macroeconomics. Now here, when we hear inflation rate, we're talking about not the change in the price of any individual good or service, which would be determined by an analysis of individual markets, but we're being asked what happens when there's a change in the aggregate price level, 
because inflation is a change in average prices or aggregate prices. So we're looking at a much higher level than the individual market. We're also looking at the quantity of money, which means that we're looking at the overall financial system in the economy. Both of these facts lead us to believe that this situation is going to pertain more to macroeconomics than to microeconomics.